guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and in this video, we're going to work with some more raw data in Trimble Business Center. So this is part of our series on working with raw data in Trimble Business Center, raw survey data. And in the first few videos, we showed you how to set up a project, import the data. And then in the last video of the series, which is video number five, we showed you how to go in and check the control. So in this video, video number six, we're going to shift gears a little bit. Uh, we're going to be working with some data from a different project from the data that we looked at in the in the first five videos. And what I'm going to do in this sixth video is I'm just going to repeat the steps that we went through in the first five videos, uh, hopefully rather quickly here in one video, just kind of as a recap or refresh because uh, we've covered quite a bit of ground in those first five videos. So if you feel like you got a good handle on all that information we covered in the first five videos, you're welcome to skip this video number six and, and jump up to the seventh video. Uh, but uh, if you feel like you could you could use a second look at some of that stuff, then uh, please uh, stay tuned here and uh, we'll go over some of those uh, we'll go over some of those steps again. So I've got TBC open here. I've upgraded to version 4.0 and I have my template open. Uh, you remember in that first video I showed you how to go into the project settings and uh, configure some of your uh, settings here, your coordinate system, your units, some of your tolerances in your computations tab. So I've done that, save this as a template. And what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and save this project to our job folder. So in my company, that's the K drive. And we've got a spot where we keep that here. Got a TBC folder where we, where we keep it. And I'm going to go ahead and rename it. And the way I like to do this is I use the job number. And then the date that I'm creating the project file. And then I have two types of projects. I have a working project and a network project. And maybe we can talk some more about that. Um, but to, the short version is the working project is where I'm checking in my daily jobs, my daily data collector files. And the network project is where I keep the control. And, and you'll see a little bit about that, the difference. Uh, you'll see a little more about that a little bit later on in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So essentially, I've just copied that template that has all my settings in it now, and I've got a clean project. And what I want to do is go ahead and import the daily job. So my guys were out for a single day, and they did some control work and set some aerial targets for a UAV, UAV flight, and they also uh, did some topo work. So we want to go find and import that data. So we're going to come over here to the ribbon, and we're going to go to the import button. This is on the home tab. We'll pull up the import dialog and I'm going to navigate to the folder that has my data. Got to go down one more level. Okay, so I can see at the top here, I've got my file, my dot job. It's got the job number, the date, the initials of the party chief, and what they were doing, doing the topo. So I'm going to go ahead and import that. This is a really important dialogue here we've talked about before, I believe, in this video series. This is letting me know that the coordinate system in the project differs from the coordinate system in the data collector. And so what it's asking me here is, when we import this data collector file, do you want me to convert the project coordinate reference system to the coordinate reference system that's in the data collector, or do you want me to keep the coordinate system coordinate reference system in the project unmodified and toss out what's in the data collector? And you almost always want the second option, but in this case, because I'm working with a real-time network, um, I want to go ahead and hold the 
RTN calibration that the guys used in the field in this case for this project this is a brand new project and that's typically what I do when I'm working with RTN on a on a in a brand new TBC project you'll use this, uh, you'll use this first option uh, just know what you're doing here and if you're not sure definitely ask for help uh, so in this case we're going to go ahead and convert to the coordinate reference system that's in the data collector uh, because we're using a real-time network in a brand new project okay and the project set up for state plane zone 3 and the data collector file state plane zone 3 so I don't think we would see a difference in the coordinates anyways uh, but we're gonna go ahead and, and choose that first option hold the data collector coordinate reference system and hit OK and it's gonna import our data now you remember in the in the first five videos of this series we talked a little bit about the process I go through uh, when I first import raw data and I look at it. So, you know, the, one of the very first things I want to do is figure out, did the field crew do what I asked them to do? Okay. And so I'm going to drop down my import of, in my project explorer here, make this a little wider. <coughs> I'm going to drop down my data collector file here, and it gives me a chronological um, tree here, tree view of the contents of the data collector file. So, I can see they went out and started the real-time network. They got this virtual base here, 3201. And then right off the bat, I got two vectors here. Okay, um, And these vectors are to uh, a couple of points that the guys set. So they've got a vector to 10,000. They've got a vector to 10,001. So this is the first azimuth pair that I've asked them to set on site, tied out with the RTK, RTN. They did that. Okay. And then we can see that they moved. Now they've got a base station here at 10,000, okay, which is this point here. So they've, they've uh, put away the network rover, and they've hopped up to 10,000 okay, with an on-site base, which is what I asked them to do. And now they're uh, surveying Topo here with the 23,000 series. And it looks like uh, 10,002, they're shooting some uh, some control some additional control okay these numbers here 10,003 4 and 5 those will be other additional control and aerial targets okay so so far they've asked they've done what I've asked them they set that first azimuth pair RTN then they've located an on-site RTK base on one of those two points okay all right so so far so good looks like the guys have followed directions okay so we got some more work here, just some additional baselines from that same RTK base. I'm not sure why it's giving me two different points here in my drop in my uh, tree view of this file. Uh, so I may have to, I'll do some poking around and see if I can figure out why it's doing that. I would expect all these vectors to just be coming out of a single point. You can see we've got some, we've got some extra um, instances here of this base point that we could probably just delete out of that file. Okay, so I've got these two batches of RT, uh, RTK vectors coming from this point on 10,000. Then it looks like they jump in and do some gun work. So it looks like they're set on 10,001 here. You can see these green vectors, total station vectors. And they're doing some infill topo, which is what I asked them to do. So, so far, so good. And then it uh, looks like they come down here and they occupy this point 10,006. And they've got some vectors there. Okay. So it looks like from the structure of this data collector file that they followed the basic outline that I that I gave them in the field, and I cheated a little bit. I looked at this data ahead of time, so I know there are there are a couple issues with what the guys have done. Um, but they followed the basic outline that I provided in their field package. So before we get into looking at some of the problems in the data, you can see we got a bunch of flags here that we want to check out. Um, so that's that's kind of follows the outline that I gave you guys in the first five videos. So I come in, set up my project, import the data, make sure they followed the basic plan in the field. Then I go in and look at all my flags. We're going to do that now. Then the next step will be to clean up the control. So let's go in and take a look at these flags. We want to do that before we start locking down any of our control points. So I'm going to highlight this vector here that's flagged. Just hover over the flag, and it tells me, hey, the guy's got, uh, they got some newer rovers, GPS rovers, and they got the tilt sensor on them. And uh, 
looks like this has got a tilt to 400. Okay, and if you check some more of these, you'll find that uh, these all have fairly small tilt values. But I, I keep that tilt value pretty small in my project properties. We'll go look at that. So on my template, the default is under device orientation, computations device orientation. I've got it set pretty low, 300. That's for when I'm doing hardscape topo or control. This is a ground topo. Um, so I'm n it's not as critical that that rod be super plumb every time they're taking a shot. So I'm actually going to bump that up to a tenth, and we'll reset that. And you're going to see almost all those flags go away. Okay, but I do still have two flags, so we're going to look at these. Okay. So this one I've got a tilt of two tenths. Uh, so that's a lot. That's a lot of tilt on the rod. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull open Notepad, and this is pretty typical for me. Because I just want to make a, a note of these issues, either to relay downstream to the drafter or survey tech that's going to be working with this data and also to get some fuel back to the crew. So I'm just going to make a, a little bulleted list here, and I'm going to note that RTK vector from 10.10,000 10, to 23061. Is a tilt of approximately two tenths of a foot, so that's a lot more than I want to see. Um, and I'm pulling the point number right here. You can see that point number. Now, one thing that I will check on this, since I got two tenths of a, of a foot of tilt, is uh, I'm going to hit this button right here in the properties dialog. That's going to take me to the point that's at the end of this vector, the 23061. I want to know what shot is this. If it's just a dirt shot, a ground shot, I'm, I'm probably okay. If it's something important, you know, if it's a shot on some critical hardscape, then two tenths of tilt, it might be an issue. So I'm gonna hit that. As soon as this comes up, I can say, oh, GS, that's our code for ground shot. So just just dirt shot, the guys are being sloppy. Um, so I'm just gonna make a note of that, okay? I'm not gonna change anything. All right, I'm gonna just pull my notes over here and we're gonna, uh, my other monitor. We're gonna look at this other vector vector here that has a flag on it okay I'm gonna hover over the flag try that again okay and I can see this has almost seven tenths tilt so I have no idea what happened here like were they holding the rover up in the air to get the shot or I just don't know okay let's hit this button we'll see what kind of shot it is it's a dirt uh, this is a fence shot okay so guys are probably lifting that rover up maybe to get a shot over the fence not sure but i'm going to make a note of it here we can ask the field crew about it uh, so we're going to say rtk vector sorry let me pull these notes over where you guys can see them rtk vector from uh, 10,000 to 23041 has a tilt of approximately 0.70 of feet. Okay. All right. And uh, those two flags aren't going to go away because it's just crappy data and I don't have a fix. So for now, I'm just going to live with those two flags in my project. All right, so now that we've got our flags cleared up, the next thing I want to do is go in and start locking down my control. Okay. That's the next step in our process. That's what we did with that other data set, data set in video five. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down here, select my virtual base. We don't want that moving. We're never going to occupy that point because it's a virtual base, but we also don't want it to be moved under any circumstances. So I'm just going to hit, let, sorry, let me go back and do that with some narration. So I'm going to select the point, pull up the properties dialog, right click, pull up properties. I'm going to hit this add coordinate button, which just comes up with the calculated coordinate. And I'm going to just change the horizontal and vertical to control quality. Hit OK. You'll see it changes to a triangle with a dot in the middle. That means we're holding it for vertical and horizontal. Okay. Then I'm going to come down to the two primary points they set, 10,000 and 10,001. Okay. So here's 10,000. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and and uh, add a coordinate here, just like we did before. Set that to control quality. Okay, That's kind of our on-site control point. And I'm just holding the uh, 
There's no calibration here. We didn't do any fast static work. Um, this is just a small site survey. So I'm just holding the RTN coordinates as control. Okay, It's like one step up from assumed. <laughs> it's basically an assumed, assumed survey on state plane, essentially, is what it is. Okay, now I've got this other point in the pair that they set, which is 10,001. Now, i got a little more work to do here because I've got a couple check shots on 10,001, this 23,000 and 23,122. I just want to make sure those are good check shots before I lock this down. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to come over here to the ribbon on my home tab. I'm going to hit the inverse button, and I'm just going to pull some inverses here. Okay, so it looks like I've got about uh, 700 horizontal there and 1600 vertical on that check shot. And I've got six, uh, let's see, 300 vertical and less than a, a hundred between these pair. So the vertical on this one's a little a little more than I want, but for RTN, it's not surprising that I'm kicking around a tenth and a, tenth and a half. And for what we're doing, it's just a ground topo. That's good enough. So I'm gonna uh, window select that. 10,001, that control point there. I'm going to add the coordinate, set it to control quality. Okay. And you can see the symbol change there, so that, that point's locked down. Now, it's not easy looking at this data set to, to quickly identify uh, any other control points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my point listing here in the Project Explorer. And I know at my company that we use 10,000 series for control. So I've taken, I've taken care of one, 10,000 and 10,001. So now I'm just going to start to uh, zoom to these other points to see what are, what are the guys doing. And most of these are probably going to be aerial targets. Okay, So let's just uh, let's look at 10,000 and 2. We're going to grab that and say center. Okay, So here's that point. And sure enough, that is a, uh, an aerial target. And you can see we've got a check shot over here. So before we lock them, by the way, on these aerial targets, we're, we're getting good two-minute observ RTN observations. So these will be good points for uh, if we need to do some infill topo, just ground topo. So I'm okay with, with holding these as control. So before we do that, we just want to make sure we got a good check shot here. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do that. You can do that inverse, okay, which tells me I've got 800 horizontal and about 1,500 vertical. Um, you can also just grab this... Uh, can also just grab this check shot if the guys shoot that properly in the field as a check shot and you can come right down here it gives you your residuals okay it's a little trickier because it doesn't do your inverse on your horizontal but it gives you an idea okay so that check shots acceptable so I'm gonna window that control point hit that add coordinate button set these to control quality okay and then we'll go to the next one 10,003, same thing, got an aerial target. No check shot on this one, but that's all right. So we're going to hit the add coordinate button, set that to control quality. Okay. Now I will add, since these are radial RTN ties and this one doesn't have a check shot. So you'll notice on 10,002, we've got a good independent check, right? Because I've got this total station vector coming in here. But 10,003. We set this target. I've just got one tie here. So before we just go out and do a bunch of work from 10,003, we'll want some validation of that control coordinate. So I just mentioned that. Okay, we'll check four. Same thing. Got a radial tie here out to an aerial target. So I'm going to pull up my properties. I will mention that, I, that uh, one of the things I checked when I first looked at this data set, which is good to check, is I told those guys shoot this for two minutes. So if I click on that vector, I can come down here and say, hey, they were there for 2 minutes and 11 seconds, so they did what they were told, right? which is what I want to know. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add a coordinate for that. Okay, then we'll jump to 5. Okay, now on this one we have a check shot, so we're just going to inverse those, make sure we got a good check. So it looks like we're 400s horizontal and 400 vertical so that's a good check so we will select that control point add a coordinate make it control quality to lock it down okay, okay we got a couple more I'm gonna come back to 10,006 because I know there's a problem with it I want to 
show you guys. So let's just go look at seven. Okay, here's 10,007, shot with the gun. Looks like we got a check shot from an independent setup, which I love to see. Good work, field crew. So let's go ahead and inverse that. That's going to give us a real good idea how our data is fitting together out here. So we got uh, 200 horizontal and about 100 vertical. So that's a super good check. So this makes me feel really good. So we're going to window select this. Go to properties, add that coordinate, make a control quality. So with the two independent checks here like this, I'd feel real good about just setting up on 10,007 back site and another control point and doing some work. Okay, so let's go back to this last number in our control point series, 10,006, because I know there's a problem here. So here's 10,006. Now the issue I have with this is, um, I've, they so they set in 10,006 and they, they collected a few topo shots here that they, they probably couldn't see here from 10,001. What I don't like about this is I got a direct and reverse um, angle here to 10,006. That's good. I like that there's a direct and reverse. That's what I told the guys to do if they had to set infill control. So they essentially traversed over to this point. This is not a close traverse. But what I don't like is there's no check shot on 10,006. So I don't have an RTK vector over here. I don't have another shot from a different total station setup. So if for some reason the guys busted the angle over here or busted the distance, I'm not, I'm not going to know. So this is essentially a radial tie to a control point that was then used as a subsequent instrument point. You really don't like that. It's bad practice. Um, my guys really should have got a check shot on this from something. GPS, even if even a GP RTN shot on here would have given me, given me an idea that we didn't have a huge bust. So they didn't do that. Now, this is pretty low risk for what we're doing. This is a ground to dirt topo. Uh, but I am going to add that to my notes because I need to provide that field feedback to the field crew. And I also need to make sure that, the, that we take a look at this cluster of points here when we're doing the topo and make sure they look like they landed in the right spot. So I'm just going to add a note here that says control point number 10,006 was set with direct reverse uh, total station measurements but without how do I want to say that? <clears throat> I'm just going to say for now, but without checks from independent control. And then in parentheses, I'm going to say uh, established with a single swing tie. Okay. All right. So despite that, I'm going to go ahead and lock this down now as a control point like we've done the others, and I'm just going to make a note that I need to take a look at that. And so what I'll want to do for sure um, the next time we're out at the site here is, is I'm going to want to try and get some confirmation that 10,006 is in the right spot, even if it's just a RTN or RTK shot on that point. Okay, so we've got the control cleaned up now. Okay, so the last thing that I'll do is go through here and we'll look at each individual setup, and I just want to make sure that my guys follow good procedures at every setup, and that's kind of the last step in this process I use to review raw data if I don't find major problems. Uh, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and, and show you. So I'm, I'm going to show you how I create a, a network project now out of this working project. Um, I'm actually going to, I'm way over, I'm at 24 minutes, so I'm actually going to stop the video. So this next video I do, video number seven, I'm going to show you how on a project where we start with RTN, I go kind of work backwards and create a network project. That's not, that's the opposite of how I normally do it, but I'll explain all that in the next video. So appreciate you guys watching. I know this was a long video, but I wanted to do kind of a single, single uh, video that showed you that process I go through to review raw data. Okay, so there's only one step left, and before we do that, we're going to go ahead and create a working project. So we'll do that in video number seven. All right, thanks for uh, watching, guys. I appreciate it.